the Pentecostal rest. Pentecost, the 50th day, was the Jubilee day, as the 50th year was the Jubilee year. The 50th day followed a Sabbath day cycle, as the Jubilee year followed a Sabbath year cycle. As the antitype of the Jubilee year will usher the world into the glorious rest in Messiah's kingdom, and in the new covenant relationship with God, so the antitype of the Jubilee day ushered believers into a rest of faith at Pentecost. So St. Paul explains, we who believe do enter into rest. All truly Christ are enabled to keep a Sabbath rest of faith and trust all the time, not merely on the seventh day or on the first day. Every day to them is a rest by faith in Christ's sacrifice, a Sabbath to the soul for shadow of heavenly rest. None could enter into this true Sabbath rest until Jesus had opened the way. His death was necessary as man's ransom price. His resurrection was necessary to enable him to apply that price on our behalf. He ascended on high, there to appear in the presence of God as the advocate for his disciples. He imputes his merit to cover their imperfection and to make their sacrifice acceptable to God that they may suffer with him and be glorified with him. For the faithful there remaineth a rest still more complete to be attained in their resurrection change. Under Jesus' direction, the apostles, his followers, were not to begin their work until they received the Pentecostal blessing, the Holy Spirit, the evidence of their acceptance as sons of God. The only thing they did during that time before their own acceptance was the choosing of a successor for Judas' place. But evidently God never recognized their choice. In his own due time, God brought forth St. Paul to be the twelfth apostle, one of the twelve foundation stones of the new Jerusalem. The error of supposing apostolic succession in the church's bishops was a costly one. It led to many grievous errors. <laughs>